Here we go. This is it. We have started. We are rolling. This is episode 303 of No Laugh Track Podcast. This is Justin Severson. We are here at Acme Comedy Company in Minneapolis because this is their podcast. Hey, am I being recorded right now? Where's this going? Instagram? I, I, that's how I thought you guys recorded me. Yeah. You're not telling me. So I yeah. just showed up and <laughs> looking all fat and flip flops and sweatpants, <laughs> taking pictures of me. So I figured I'd reverse the tables. It, it wasn't my idea. I know. I, I didn't uh I didn't get all dolled up for the show today either. You Look fine. Do a lot better than I do. Well, thank you, the Brian. The bottoms of your shoes are pink. <laughs> Wait, don't look those. I'm sorry about that. I didn't mean that you're, you're underfooting. Okay. This is this is episode 303 of No Laugh Track Podcast. There it is. There's the video that's going up somewhere. It's just Instagram. It's really, just Instagram. We shouldn't, we shouldn't pay much attention to it. I just thought it would be fun. Yeah. But now it became the whole thing. No, no I, I don't even know what we're talking about. <laughs> Besides that cough, how are you doing today, Brian? I'm an eh. Yeah? Today I'm in a grumpy mood, but the shows will be good. 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 Yeah. The problem is, like, to wake up and do radio, then go back to bed and wake up and do podcast, and then go back. I don't. My body doesn't know who I am. Yeah, but when haven't you had that lifestyle? Well, usually they organize them together, like oh. nine to eleven. Oh. Now, the, now my body's like, well, take a nap. Oh, I gotta get up. Oh, I gotta get. You know, I don't know. You know, I got. I don't know when to sleep. When to go to the bathroom. I'll so, sleep. I'll sleep on stage. It'll be fine. T- tonight? Yeah. Why not? Yeah. No, I'm in a good. I'm in. Okay, I'm in okay mood. You know. What time does your body f- telling you it is right now? Uh, that's the whole thing. I don't know. You don't know. I think what the key is that I wanted to smoke weed before the interview, but there was too much wind outside, and it kept blowing the joints out. You, you didn't duck around the corner or something? I didn't really have time. I was late. I was walking in flip-flops. It's not like I could <laughs> get over here fast. And it is a short walk. And I was hoping I could find a nook and cranny to smoke in, and the boss is here. So, <laughs> and it's, so I'm kind of, it's kind of a weird beginning, but I'm okay. 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 Yeah, yeah. How are you? <laughs> I'm very good. Good. I'm very good. I've been looking forward to this all week. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll, be, uh, I'll be in a better mood then. Let's do it. <laughs> this is it. Yeah. This is it. Um... How has the week been going for the shows? Uh, well, we all had, we had two days, Tuesday and Wednesday, and they've been they've been great. This is one of the best clubs in the North America, you know, yeah. top ten at least. So it's well run, and you know, uh, great shows. Tuesday travel days, you're always kind of tired, taking two airplanes or whatever, waking up early, and then you perform, and you're like you're trying to remember your jokes. You're like, oh, I'm really tired. But Tuesday went great anyway because it's this club, you know. Where are you living now? Uh, Los Angeles. Yeah. Past eighteen years. Yeah. Pa- past eighteen years. Yeah, yeah. It's just. Uh, if I was living in New York, it wouldn't be that long of a flight, but from L.A. it was about, you know, it's only a three and a half hour flight, but then when you add the waking up and t- and then the, the taking the cab and then the hour at the airport and then the flying and the other hour at the airport, I hate Minneapolis airport. I hate it. Oh, yeah. wh- why? Because it's like everything that should be right outside, like a normal airport, when you get it, like you go to the ground, like you take your luggage and you stop outside and they go, no, no, no. no. It's another two mile walk to the cabs. <laughs> yeah. And why? Uh-huh. Like everything's, everything's farther away. And so I'm pulling my t-shirts because I'm a, I'm a fucking store now. I'm not a comic. I got to sell shirts. After right, shows. Right. I'm in a bad mood. Let's start over. No, God. <laughs> anyway, it's just, I don't like Minneapolis airport. <laughs> Worst one, Detroit airport sucks. That sucks. Okay. Uh, Atlanta is okay, but Atlanta's not great, but it has a smoking section. That's I rare. I don't know why they got rid of smoking sections. The Vegas airport still has smoking? No, that's gone. It is? Yeah. Utah got rid of theirs as what? well. So now you got Memphis and Atlanta, and that may be it. If I think correctly, there used to be another one, but I can't remember where it is. Uh-huh. But it's like, I don't know why me smoking in an enclosed area is bothering other people. It's not. It's some exactly. Yeah, it's some. It's just the the they didn't figure out the fine print of these whatever law that enacted that makes them like oh you know what we could make an exception for these rooms where they leave you know just leave people I think alone. I think the people are dicks. They have no like they're like oh it's a disgusting habit and screw them for doing it. It's like well wait oh wait a second you want me calm on the airplane? Oh, okay, along those lines, where are cigarettes still affordable? Uh, North Dakota, South Dakota have the cheapest prices. Missouri, uh, those can't are pre- be Minnesota. Those are low. Where there's American Indians, there's lower prices. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't think there's any in Missouri though. We have, uh, you know, American Indians in the casinos and stuff. They mm-hmm. used to be known to having the cheaper cigarettes. Not anymore. No, not anymore. Not no, anymore. No, that's yeah. true. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah, you guys are like nine something. Yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. New York's like eleven. Something. What is California? Uh, nine something. It was seven something, and they changed that. Um, cheaper yeah, to sm- matter. What's cheaper that? to smoke weed in California. 
Uh, you think, but the taxes on that are really high. I tried to buy two joints. I can only afford one. <laughs> Isn't that fucked up? I had like $20. Like, no, 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 it's not enough. Dude, that's crazy. That is crazy. Yeah. So I just jerked off and left. <laughs> Fuck you guys. The alarms went off. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will admit that I've uh, I someone who lives I don't travel a lot probably no. not in close to as much as you but um, I have gotten lost at the Minneapolis airport trying to leave it's it's a little too much yeah it's a little too they, they could easily have the cabs outside like a normal fucking airport mm-hmm. you know when you this is a question I've been asking people here and there yeah. recently when okay. you get in an Uber do you I, first of all I don't get in an Uber okay yeah well, do you, well, you want to hear my thoughts on that absolutely fuck Uber those are my thoughts fuck Uber fuck left. Fuck lift. I'm tired. I don't know what fucking when I'm supposed to sleep. So, flop Uber. Flop Uber. That's Fuck right. Uber. <laughs> what I'm saying is, first of all, I've missed the airplane because of an Uber. And I never went back after that. Because the guy is not a fucking trained driver. He's stopping on yellow lights. He's looking at his ways on his phone. And I'm like, no, 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 you got to make a right because up there. He's like, no, but my phone says. And then we're in traffic because yeah. he didn't fucking listen to me. Another thing is they don't shut the fuck up. I don't fucking care who you are. Just take me to the fucking airport. But since it's a ride share thing and they're all worried about points and getting likes. Yeah. It's like, fuck you. <laughs> Third of all, you've like I know as an actor, I lost a lot of jobs and continue to lose jobs. And my price has gone down as an actor because of reality shows by Amateurs doing what I did. They're still writers. They're still directors. They're still editors. They're still set designers. But now they've gotten rid of the actors with the reality shows. So I know what that's like. So these fucking Uber, these these kids wanting supplemental incomes, have eliminated people that were feeding their fucking families by their trade. That bothers me. But I understand cab drivers can be assholes. I understand that the, the prices are high. I understand all that. I understand. Yeah. But I'm not. I still think my side has a better argument. Those are my feelings on Uber. Interesting. Yeah, so Interesting. I don't support Uber. You're keeping the cabs in yeah. business. That's right. Yeah. Well, I'm, I still fight with them, you know, but I'd rather a licensed driver who with a, with a uh, with, when I call the company, a person answers the phone. It's not some thing on a, it's not an app with some faceless people. Right. I like, I like real fucking honest got people who, who rented their cab and are paying their mortgage on their cab and, you know, whatever, whatever you call it. Paying their lease on their cab, yep. paying their mortgage on the house from their trade, as opposed to people who don't want to get a fucking real job and just want to supplement their income. Now people who are Uber drivers hate me. <laughs> so I really, we shouldn't have done this. Because <laughs> I have to pretend. I don't say these things on stage because they get mad. They get mad. But you know really, what? They know what they're doing. Uber will go on without your business. Exactly. That's the truth. So. Exactly. Yeah. And I'm not trying to stop them. Right. I'm just trying to stop other people. Did you see the story that came out earlier this week about this uh, vomit uh, scam? What? That the Uber drivers are pulling on. This is a, I, I actually thought you were going to mention this. What are they doing? They're vomiting? No. They have a, uh, apparently in the small print, when you sign up to get a ride from Uber. You, so you agree not to vomit? You agree not to vomit or pay the fee <laughs> if you do. Well, apparently there's some Uber drivers, at least one somewhere, who's sending out a fake a picture of like, yeah, here's you throwing up in the, like, not a picture of the person. Here's the puke you left I in see. the back of my car. You owe me $150 to clean this shit up. Wow. And people are like, you know, they're, now that they're sounds targeting like people. Uber. Now that sounds like Uber. They're targeting people that are, you know, uh, out of their minds yeah. drunk so that they don't remember. Uh, but you know what? That's that's what, that's what I'm saying. Of course that's what's going to happen. Okay. And I also don't understand how a beautiful girl late at night is going to get in a fucking Uber with a complete stranger. I don't understand that. You're going to get in somebody's car completely. You don't, you don't, it's, it's amazing to me. It's just amazing to me. It just sounds like a bad idea if you just say what the actual product is. It sounds like a horrible idea. Yeah. For less money, a complete stranger can come pick you up, and you sit in the backseat of his car, and he takes you where you want to go. Yeah. That just sounds really fucking stupid and dangerous. Right? Yeah. <laughs> That's how I feel. Also, I, one final thing I want to say about it is that... Um, we can keep going. I don't care. This whole... We're going to do two hours on cabs and versus... Yeah. <laughs> no. Um, and... Um, I wish I was the fact, done. The fact that someone is not going to accidentally get into a cab it, thinking that it... You know? Like, people... Somebody yeah. tried to get in my car once yeah. thinking it was their Uber. Like, Uber, who the, who the yeah, fuck are you? When Uber started, the people... I had a black car and people would open my door and get in. Yeah. And I would be, and I just take them to my house and rape them, and then, <laughs> and I bury them in my fucking backyard. That's what you get for not supporting cab drivers. <laughs> fucking, yeah, I'm Uber, Uber horny. Get in here. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Where do you want to go to the bar? This isn't a bar. Oh, it's the nice. It's my house. It's a nice nightclub. It's called my apartment. You flick the lights on and off. Dun, 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 dun. Take off your pants. You get these new oh, lights. I just, I just had the the, the, the chair shampoo. Do you take off your pants? <laughs> Fuck over. <laughs> I was looking back, Brian. Uh-huh. The last time we were here, three years ago. September 2nd, 2015 is when we recorded the podcast. September 2nd. Okay, a little under, little under three years. A little under three years. Episode 166. We wow. are now on 303. Seems like you should be higher than that. No, I guess not. 52. Yeah, we've, there's there. been a few misses yeah, yeah, here yeah. and there, but uh, yeah, we're pretty steady. There have been, I think I, the count is correct, four Star Wars movies since the last time you were here. Right. I hated that second one, man. For, I, I, I love the... I thought Solo was okay. I just and, finally saw it about a week and ago. And I thought the first the first um, episode... The J.J. Abrams one? Yeah, yeah. Was, was okay. Yeah. Even though it's basically episode four, just retold. Yeah. It's the same fucking story. It was just, okay, fine. But I still enjoyed it. Yeah. And I thought the second one should have been titled Star Wars, All Men Are Wrong. Because it's like every man in the in the movie is either a bad guy or incorrect or stupid. Okay. And every woman, first of all, there's like 18 year old girl flying a plane with lipstick on in the beginning. She's flying the the fighter. She's got lipstick and makeup on. She's like bombs away. Like and the, well, the big the, the middle aged drivers are being blown out of the sky. But this 17 year old this girl with makeup on is kicking ass. And then they <laughs> drop. You're right. Then they drop bombs. Right. They drop bombs in space. Bombs are falling. But there, there's no gravity in space, so how are the bombs falling? Yeah. Second of all, another good point. Yeah. Second of all, uh, fucking, why does Luke Skywalker have to milk a fucking uh, giant seagull in front of us? And also, why didn't? Who's the fucking? Who's the? Who's the? The girl with the purple hair who sacrifices herself at the end. Uh, Lord Dern. Yeah. 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 Why doesn't Lord Dern tell Poe? The fucking plan. Right. Why doesn't she tell him the plan? He, why, he, everybody else knows the plan. Why doesn't he know the plan? So that whole fucking hour and a half in the middle happens because she doesn't tell him the plan. It, they could have skipped all of those scenes. Yeah. And why? Does, and first of all, the uh, Osta Finn is a coward in the first movie. Now he's fucking brave as shit. Mm-hmm. He's, he's basically doing a kamikaze mission. He's, fun, he's no problem. <laughs> and, and I don't understand. And he's wrong. He's like, let's go here and get this thing, and, and then we'll break into here. I was like, well, that, none of that had to be done. And first of all, it didn't work anyway. Yeah. So every man is either a bad guy or an idiot. Luke Skywalker, you find out he, like, he almost killed the kid. Right. And it's like, well, what, what movie is this? Every guy was a fucking idiot. Mm-hmm. And all the women that play. And f- first of all, if you introduce the fact that a fucking uh, the fighter can go into light speed and go through another fighter and destroy it, then what? That eliminates everything in all the other movies because they could have been doing that the whole fucking time. They could have just put their 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 fighter on light speed and just had it go right through the Death Star. Yeah. So what what would it just it's just a poorly made movie. And the biggest one, Carrie Fisher can fly. Thank you. She can fly with no say, no training. This. No training at all. And Ray, she has one day of training, two hours of training, and she can do things. But meanwhile, the Carrie Fisher never had any training, can fly through space mm-hmm. and breathe mm-hmm. through space and not freeze. She, she's fine. That's, it's, that's it's my a horrible movie. Possibly my least favorite scene in any Star Wars movie is her f- yeah. flying, floating, whatever the hell what, you want to call it. How was that? I, I can't stand it. And Luke's never flew. Luke was a he was a certified Jedi. She's like Badass. Uber, yeah. yeah. And he and he never flew once. <laughs> She's Uber. She's Lyft. What's this Lyft shit? <laughs> yeah, it was. I really hated that movie. And I have no problem with strong women, but can we balance it out? Because Carrie Fisher was a strong woman in the first movie. Oh, yeah. So now in this movie, when men are just peeing themselves and mm-hmm. fucking being blown out of the sky and d- doing an hour and a half plot twist that doesn't need to be done. Like, you don't deserve the little plan. Well, why not? Then I don't know. Because he killed all those fighters in the beginning, I guess, the bombers. It was a fight. It was okay. Sounds like you're okay with them uh, delaying whatever the next one was supposed I'm not, to be. I'm not even... Like, I'm Listen, it's not like I... I Love Star Wars as a kid. So it's not like I take it as seriously as everybody else. Yeah. But I don't like it when when sequels and stuff when they don't look at the original movies and try to keep that going. Mm-hmm. And try to when they break uh, the scripts that they've created already. Mm-hmm. Know, that's all. Yeah. Like I still don't like that the Return of the Jedi ends with them blowing up the Death Star, which they just did two movies before. I still don't like that. Right. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. you just did this. Yeah. Yeah. 
a little too repetitive. There's yeah. a lot of re- repetition yeah. in those yeah, exactly. movies. Yeah. Yeah. No but anyway, though, that's my feelings on that. I like it. All right. I like you had strong feelings about that. And when is Ray going to take her pants off? <laughs> I really want. Never mind. I think you, you might have to redo that movie on your own to get that. Well, they have the floor. She told me the guy, <laughs> told me the bad guy can't make her pants fall off. Did you just <laughs> once? Remember that movie? Uh, <laughs> it was one of the first uh, like boob movies I saw when I was a kid. Boob Z- movies. Zapped. Zapped. With Scott with, Bale. Uh, Scott Bale and Willie Ames. Yeah, I remember that. Well, that that's, uh, that's a hell of a way to go. Here I am saying you know, men are stupid with the movie, but yes, Zapped was. <laughs> Zap might have been my first ejaculation. <laughs> When I think about it, the whole movie is he has magical powers, and what is used it for to make women's clothes fly pop, off? Pop open. <laughs> that's all he does. Yes. And that's what I would have done, too, if uh-huh. I had the power back then. Yeah. I think I saw it when I was probably 12 or 13. Yeah. I, thought, this I think is the VHS greatest. capes out. I used to, I think I rewounded a bunch mm-hmm. more of the tape, but <laughs> some of them were great. The 80s, that's why my idea of sex involves embarrassment for somebody, because I grew up during the time of the 80s movies where people's clothes were off, and they didn't want them to be off. Yeah. Like Porky's or whatever. It's it's all uh-huh. embarrassment, shame situations. Yeah. So, you know, I like me or my girl to f- fucking to be horribly embarrassed. <laughs> Who left the window open? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> you know, in Porky's, you ever see Porky's? Oh, uh, yeah. You remember the black guy with the knife who mm-hmm. scares him out of the cabin? Mm hmm. That was my friend's father. So, in grammar school, my friend Juma, Juma Redwood, his dad played that guy. So when Porgis came out, he was like, yeah, my dad's in that movie. <laughs> and, he, and I believe him, and I looked, and it, it was. It said something Redwood. It was my friend's father. What the hell? Yeah, yeah. I know that I, that was one of the movies where, like, uh, you were even, uh, if you were you know, of a certain age at that time, you were in two groups. Yeah, you were yeah. the cool kid who led, who, had cool fun. parents yeah, or yeah. somewhere got to sneak off and watch it, my or the ones did. who wanted to really badly and didn't yeah. get to. My parents didn't let me watch it, but we, they were in Atlantic City, and they went and gambled, and my brother and I put it on HBO, and, uh, and I thought, was funny. Porky's 2 has that great scene with the zombie where the guy goes boogie, 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 boogie. Remember that scene? Yeah. And it's so funny because when it, cause I was like <laughs> but it cuts to the cops. The cops are just there. I got him confused. He's like boogie, boogie, boogie. <laughs> my parents didn't let me watch him either. I had to sneak over to uh, my friend Chris's house whose parents would yeah. rent any movie. Right. And they were one of the early yeah. you know, VHS. My, some people, like my friend Jay, his dad would have porn in the living room when we came over. Like, well, we're kids. Whoa. We walk in. He was like, hey, guy, kids, come out of a seat. And he's watching porn. Yeah. Well, he's since been divorced and he's out somewhere. But, <laughs> yeah, I bet. But it was, uh, it was pretty shocking to walk in and see, like, Harry, you know. Was that the most fun house in the neighborhood? No, we didn't. We were all creeped out by it. <laughs> Good. Yeah, yeah. It was yeah, a little man. too much. You shouldn't. You, you can't skip because we didn't even have Porky's then. We didn't have the embarrassment stage, so to go right to hardcore. Yeah. Yeah, it was a little, little weird. That's that could be scary for yeah, a young yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah you better. <laughs> anyway, boogie boogie boogie. I love that scene. Was the. <laughs> It's great. You should look it up on YouTube. The Boogie Boogie scene, Porky's 2. Tell me if it's not funny. And you Does know anybody air those movies anymore? Uh, yeah, they're, they exist somewhere. Yeah, somewhere. But my favorite, if you remember the scene, what I like about acting is this, is that as a kid, you think the guy who's playing the zombie is the funny character. But then when you grow up, you realize it's the two cops in the car that are staring at him like, what the? That's where you laugh. So when you think about it, their performance was just as good as the Boogie Boogie before. Like, when I was a kid, I used to think the Marx Brothers and Laurel, uh, were funny. But really, the people they were playing tricks on were just as funny. Yeah. They had to play Surprise and all that. So I always think of the Javier Bardem scene from No Country for Old Men. The guy in the gas station, Gene Jones is his name, the actor, he played it so well that he's half responsible for that Best Supporting Actor award. He's terrified. In the scene. Where Gene Jones in the scene? Gene Jones was also in The Hateful Eight. Uh, so it's like he's terrified. Yeah. And so his performance is just as equal to Harvey Bardem. They're both fucking playing so well together. And he gets no recognition from that except for one part in uh, Hateful Eight. Yeah, right? yeah. Yeah, it's, I, as you grow older, you realize that it's not just the guy... It's not just the Marx Brothers or Harvey Bardem or the Boogie Boogie guy. There's other people in the scene are making it. 
Fantastic. I, I saw that you posted something recently on social media. It was uh, I think I don't know where you put it first, but it was, I saw it on your Facebook. Uh-huh. A lot. Of, it was looked like some college or high school performance. Of oh something. yeah, 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 yeah. No, I was. Uh, it was yeah. I saw that. It's always weird for people to see that. They um. Well, yeah, you were getting a lot of reaction on that of other people. It was that, uh, yeah. It's that's I forgot how, but I oh because I'm being paid my not being paid my apartment building wants me to move out for a month. They want to renovate my apartment. And I think that's bullshit because I'm already paying the renovated rate. So why not just wait till I really move out and then fucking renovate it? Doesn't matter. So I got to spend a month of my life living in piles just to get everything out of my house. So while I'm moving, I found this DVD and it's my it's my high school plays. And I saw and I was like, oh, I remember this. And it was this one moment where um, there's a play called Room Service. And there's this one moment in it where I always knew I wanted to be a com- comedic actor. At that point, I wasn't even thinking uh, stand-up yet. Stand-up didn't come in until fourth grade or so. No, I guess so. I, I, I'm talking out of my ass. <laughs> so, yeah, this was high school, way after fourth grade. I hope so. So, yeah. <laughs> so, anyway, so the point was that I already wanted to be a comedic actor. And when room service, we did room service, there was one scene where I, I was getting really giant laughs and, like, big laughs. Like, you shouldn't you don't, shouldn't get these laughs at a high school play. You okay. know what I mean? There's parents, there's teachers, there's little kids, there's students. And I was getting giant laughs, and uh, and I remember thinking to myself during the scene, "Hey, I, I could, I could, I could really do this." It was, and that, then I went and found that scene and put that online because uh, I was like, "This is actually a big moment." It, like, if I ever was going to become famous, which is not going to happen, <laughs> it's not going to happen unless I kill somebody, and then people are going to go back and go look at my old YouTube videos and be like, "Yeah, yeah he was all right." I do remember him. Yeah, yeah, he had that one joke, and he did it for twenty years. He was good. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> I got this. I got this stuff. Nobody fucking records them though. The best. The best. The, 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 never mind. So, but then they could go back and be like, that. That would be the opening scene. And we're like, well, that was the moment where he decided he could do it. So I put it online, and people were very, very nice about it. You know? Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, I, sh- I wish I could write more. I just don't write that much anymore. I have. Uh, you're talking co- writing comedy? comedy. I have like all these new jokes, and I'm bringing them out slowly. Like, if I, I, I don't, some of these guys are amazing. They have great agents and great managers, and they could go to a club and just do new jokes for the whole weekend and tank and still keep working. Yeah. I have no comedy agent, comedy manager. I only have a theatrical manager for, for auditions. Oh. So I have to kill to be invited back because I'm not filling the place out by my name. So I got to make sure they go, well, he kills. So I only I try ten minutes of new jokes in the middle every show. I was just gonna ask you yeah. when do you sneak them in? I do ten minutes in the middle. Okay, and that's what I do everywhere I go. Yeah, and it takes time. It's not like I live in New York and can have a new act by fucking Friday. So it's very. Uh, it takes a while, and so that's what sucks. Yeah, you know, like I I know, like I have all these jokes and I gotta keep transferring them over and over because they're on tiny pieces of paper, and I can't read my handwriting. And I'm like, what is that douche? What? Do you want R two D two? I don't have a joke about R two D two. That's pretty much that's pretty much what it is. And I have like eight jerk off jokes now. Is, why am I concentrating on that so much? I can never do that anywhere. You know what I mean? Yes, you can. No, where am I going to do it? Uh, you mean? Oh, you're talking about television? Television. Yeah. What am I going to do it? I can only do it on Conan. Eight jerk off jokes. Fucking can't do that. I can do it on Netflix if they fucking I'm answer the say, goddamn you, email. Yeah, the special. Once you get the special, you yeah, well, I have to have a comedy off. agent to have a special on Netflix. They, they're giving out specials to everybody. My cat had a special. It didn't do well. My I cat lo- had a special. I loved it. But that's what it was like. That's what it's like. You just picture my cat walking out like, yeah. <laughs> it's like, don't, they're giving it to everybody who has an agent. It's very frustrating. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, it's interesting that you say that about the writing. Well, then what what do you call what you're doing on your podcast? That, well, what, not, what's not stand-up? Have you listened to my podcast? Yeah, and how is it? I mean, it's, it's the, not stand up though. Well, that muscle's different. Uh, writing, no, no, we writing were talking your, about writing stand up. Yeah, but you're writing funny stuff. I, mean, I love my podcast. I, if I could, that's I, I I love acting, and I and I also love being in charge. And a lot of times, I want to could take the other actor's face and just go, no, do it like this, you uh-huh. know. But I can't. Yeah. But so on my show, my podcast, I play all the parts, so I can do that. You know, I can't control how I want it to be. Yeah. But not every episode is a winner. Some episodes I'm like, just like, we got to do one. We got to just do one. You know, or I'm too stoned. And I go, that's funny. And it's not. <laughs> Two days later, I'm like, that's not funny. But some of them I'm really proud of, you know. Like, I, it, I just put one out today, only six or seven views, but I fucking love it. 
I, love I listened to it on the drive over. Oh, did you? Okay. Yeah. Did you After like I it? listened to the previous four in the last week. Yeah. <laughs> I like the names one. Doors. Well, the doors and names. Uh, you hear the one with the guy had a really long name? Yes. That one I like a lot. I think that's kind of Monty Python-ish. Uh-huh. Then there's uh, Doors. I think it's funny with the door sound effects are coming. No, I'm out. confused. Is he, he, <laughs> he's, he's interviewing door sound effects. He's like, I don't. Is he used to here? Did you leave? <laughs> <laughs> and the new one I like too with um, the mystery. I like the conspiracy stuff because everywhere, because everywhere I go, people are telling me 9/11 was planned, and I, and the fucking um, what's it called? Uh, that there was another there was another shooter in Vegas. Yeah, right. And um, it was an arms deal gone bad. Yeah, like when does an arms deal go bad and they just immediately turn their guns on a concert and start killing people? Right. And they go, all the other there was another window broken out. No, there wasn't. That's was a YouTube creation. Yeah. So well, there was somebody in an interview that said that there was uh, somebody somebody yelled in the crowd they're all going to die. I'm like, yeah, I saw that video. Did you notice at the bottom of the screen it didn't say any news fucking information at all? Channel 4 something didn't say anything? Right. So it's ridiculous. People are going out of their way to cause confusion. And they're like, oh, well, the people, there was a shooting at the Bellagio. No, there wasn't. They heard the echoes of the, of the gunshots and they broke down a barrier to run for safety. Yeah. Where they thought the gunshots were happening here. It's, it's always the easiest explanation. And so I really enjoyed doing that conspiracy one because people were like, um, uh, oh, the government did it. So you're saying the government paid 16 people to kill themselves. Right. That's what they did. Mm -hmm. They always forget that option. Yeah, 16 guys committed suicide. Oh, when you say it like that, I yeah. guess maybe. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, that shit drives me nuts. I wrote, I wrote as I was driving over here, which I don't recommend uh, writing notes while you drive. <laughs> but I did do that. I was not on my phone. No, you, no, was, <laughs> but I, I did write on a which nap. Which is worse because there's two. You need two hands for that. Good. Uh, it, no, I've. I disagree. I've learned to pin it down with my hand and just write really sloppy like this on my right, okay, okay. Anyway, I wrote. What's it say? Detective Meow Meow. Detective Meow Meow was funny. <laughs> I like that skit. So as a. Uh, I have a cat. I have to tell you, Brian. My wife and I have a cat That's at home. Funny, yeah. Its name is Meow Meow. Really? Yes. No, no wonder you like this kid. So now I'm going to call it Detective <laughs> Meow Meow. Her, her, pardon me, Detective not it. Meow. So it's a skit where um, there's a dead body, and they're interviewing the husband, and he's like, oh, a black guy did it. And I'm like, okay, we got enough to go on. And then a cat walks in, little detective cat, and he goes, this is Detective Meow Meow, and he just keeps meowing. And the guy's like, what am I, do I, what, what's going on? Do I answer him? And he's like, meow, meow. And he's like, what's happening here? What do I do? And he's like, shut up. Get this cat out of here. And finally he goes, all right, I killed her. He just loses his mind. <laughs> and they go, another mystery solved by Detective Meow Meow. I, like, I love stupid shit. <laughs> that stuff is great, man. I wish. Your podcast deserves more attention. Thank you. I, I, tru I sincerely Thanks. mean that. I really it, was, uh, it was with All Things Comedy for a while, but they... Uh, you know, they got the Segura and the Bill Burr podcast and the Burr Kreischer ones they have. They're already sure they have their hits. So it was really hard to get attention on, on there. Sure. But those guys are good. They released my two albums. I have an album out that's a sketch album. Yeah, I haven't heard, I have not heard no, it. No, nobody has. <laughs> I literally, I was all excited about it, put a lot of work into it. And then uh, the sales came back $16 hey. in a year. I was like, wow, that's impressive. That's pretty impressive. That's pretty low. They say now that it's almost not worth doing DVDs or CDs because all the only the only reason it's worth it is for Sirius XM. So they're not buying it anymore. Now that they're getting everything for free through Sirius and free free through Netflix. Yeah, they're saying don't bother unless you're Sebastian Maniscalco or uh, Amy. You know what? Just do it. Just. Just just give them a serious exam and concentrate. Try to get a Netflix special. Yeah, yeah. It is crazy how uh, certain industries have been affected with uh, with the streaming services. I just worked a uh, concert last Saturday. Luke Bryan was in town, the country singer. Uh -huh. It's his. F the guy has not been around that long. It's the fourth time I've worked one of his concerts huh. he, at four different venues around town. Right. Why does he do that? Uh -huh. Because that's where he makes the money. He's coming to in sell concerts. fifty thousand tickets. Yeah, he's yeah. not selling his album. They don't buy it anymore. Yeah. Yeah. And it's really sad. I used to like getting an album and seeing it from beginning to end. What was interesting about, like, Peter Gabriel's Us is an album about a breakup. And when you listen to the first song and you end it with the last song, it's healing. You've healed with Peter Gabriel when he lost Rosanna Arquette. That's what the album is. Okay. And nowadays, you don't have those experiences. No. And I miss that, you know? Yeah. Yeah, anyway. Let's go back to the the, what is it called store? I don't know who. I'm the, your so album. tired. 
The, what? This $16 album. $16 album. <laughs> Your $16 album. <laughs> it's called, no, I've been promoting it now. It's called uh, Stupid Time, a sketch album. It's all really ridiculous. And it's also sketch. It's not stand up, you know? And also, nobody knows who the fuck I am. That, like, I'll, some people either know me and like me, or they've, and the, the bulk of them have never, ever heard of me, you know? And I'm fine with that. Okay. I actually don't want to be famous. I used to, back before the internet existed. Like I, for example, I'm a, I'm a huge John Candy fan. Mm-hmm. And and when I was growing up, nobody made fun of John Candy. Nobody did. Right. He was beloved. Mm-hmm. Everybody liked him. If he if TMZ existed when he existed, it would be like get a shot of John Candy eating pasta in an airport. You know, like that would be something. It would embarrass him. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was a comic, a female comic, had a joke uh, where she said, uh, "I don't want to ruin, I don't want to point her out." But the punchline was that she uh, made fun of John Candy's weight at the punchline. This is recently, mm-hmm. and I was like, "Fuck you!" He's a goddamn beloved icon, beloved. Yeah. Not just we're not talking like, "Hey, he's like Michael Jackson." No, he was beloved. Nobody didn't like John Candy. Everybody felt protective of him because he was he brought that vulnerability to the camera and. and and, she, and so now he's being made fun of. And I was like, I don't want anything to do with that. I can't post a video without being insulted or attacked. All my friends are insulted. Everyone, we can't even read. Our comics can't even read their own YouTube comments. Right. Or, you just go to Reddit. Like, my, my friends, well, they won't even go to Reddit. And, like, I know Adam Sandler doesn't go online. His whole life is offline. Yeah. He doesn't want to go online. There's no respect for entertainers anymore when we used to uh, idolize them. And I think that's because people don't want to idolize entertainers anymore, but they do. But what about the ones that deserve it? Like when you start breaking the, the Kardashians and you start watering down the celebrity pool with untalented people, then then I understand it. But that means like only the people that were grandfathered in, Robert De Niro, uh, Meryl Streep, only those people would get, would get respect. But now it's just a fucking free-for-all, and I don't want any part of it. And it doesn't make any sense because w- my whole career doesn't make any sense because I want to tour, but yet I can't tour because I'm not famous, and I don't want to be famous. So what the fuck am I doing with my life? What am I doing? Nobody told me the internet was coming. No. When I, when, you know what I mean? Uh-huh. My, I had two sitcoms. Both of them were before fucking MySpace. And before Friendster. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. Yeah. And now it's now I'm getting 12-year-old kids writing to me and yelling at me. I was performing in uh, Montreal and some kids in the front row by himself. And I do one joke. One joke. I'm on stage for a minute. And he goes, I saw this already. I was like, oh, you, you saw this on YouTube? He goes, yeah. I was like, so you, you know there's 44 minutes left to go that I might do something else. And he goes, oh, and he goes I, I said, how much did you pay to get in? And he goes, $10. So I reached in my pocket. I had $10 Canadian. And I just threw it at him. And I was like, get the fuck out. Good. And the crowd clapped. Now, you know, it's just like, like where, what, nothing like that happened. People loved Cary Grant. People loved John Candy. People loved Bill Murray. And now it's like, it's a little much now. I don't really want a part of it. You know? <laughs> but on the other hand, it's what I want to do also. But it's I, there's, I wish there was a way you could be semi. Well, whose career would I like? I would like, uh, I guess Paul Giamatti's too big. Need somebody blow him. You know who was good? John Polito. Remember John Polito? No. Uh-uh. John Polito was detective at the end of Big Lebowski. He was the bad guy in Miller's Crossing. No? You had offer him the high hat. I can't picture his face. Well, I can't picture Exactly. It. Yeah. Here's a guy. Whoever who the, worked, with the, worked with the Coen brothers, he was a very famous actor in the regards to be, with the business. Like if me and you were casting, and I said we should bring in John Pleeder, he'd be like, "Oh yeah," and the director would know who he was, and he would get the job sure, without sure, a sure. But nobody else knew who he was. That's a good career. Yeah, I like that. You know, interesting. Yeah, yeah. What? Uh, what I know the most recent time I saw you on my television was in a bunch of makeup. Uh, as, as a, a fucking mango. As a mango. Yeah, good times. I was third lead on sitcoms now. I'm fourth mango. <laughs> Stop. It's true, though. I'm not. <laughs> That's on fun. I'm a fucking mango in a commercial. It's awful, dude. You, but you can do all of them. It's not. I, I, can, I can play all sorts of mangoes, all sorts of fruit. You need a banana. 
I'm in there. Now, it was, there's two commercials. One of them I find very funny, uh, and one of them I think is okay. But we literally shot 12 hours of that. And those are the two they came up with. When I'm like, I man, saw, there's a lot, more, there's a lot funnier ones out there. When I first saw the picture you put on Instagram, I thought it was a filter that put made your face look like yeah, a mango. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know that was really. No, but it's, that's what I'm saying. That people make special effects a big deal in a movie, and like commercials have those now. Yeah, I'm a fucking mango. Or the freaking filter on Instagram or yeah, yeah, Snapchat. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll tell you, for me, like you know, it bothers you when um, Ubers. Ubers and reality television and sure. like all that stuff. Mm-hmm. It bothers me when when people get credit for being creative for using a filter. Yeah, exactly. Like you it, didn't do anything. You, you hit a fucking you button. The button. I and you example, recognize that it's oh cute or yeah. funny. So what? I did a video where I used one of those filters where I was a a baby tiger with a birthday hat on and a bottle of milk. You know. And I was, and I did a video where I was saying my friend was in a car accident and, and he's in a coma and we need to raise money for him because his wife can't, has three kids and, and I'm aware that I look like a baby tiger right now, but the kids were playing on my phone and I can't get the sticker off. Uh, just please give. And I start crying when you open your mouth. The bottle goes in and goes meow. It just is very funny. Do something creative with it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm a fucking mango. <laughs> I was on. Uh, I shot an episode of Shameless last week. Oh, um, was I'm, that the security guard outfit? Yeah, and I did. I'm dying up here. I was a very good part. I'm dying up here, which was very funny. That I had Superior Donuts. That was fun. Then it got canceled, and then I did a. Uh, it was another. I did a, an episode of Alone Together, which is coming out in three weeks. Alone Together is not a show me and you would know, but if we were young, we'd know it. What is it? Alone Together on the Freeform Channel. It's big on Hulu. It comes out August 1st on Hulu. Uh, Alone Together. Esther Pravitsky and Benji Oflalo. It's a very good show. Hmm. And it's big with millennials. Okay. It's very, very, it's about like two millennials trying to make it in, in, uh, in, in L.A. Okay. But it's actually very popular. And they, uh, I work with them at the comedy store, and they wrote me a very funny part. Like, and they actually sat down and wrote me a part. And Sweet. I was very, very flattered. Nice. And it's weird because I'm usually such a grump. It's amazing when somebody likes me. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm like, wow, well, they're nice to me. Okay. I should, and I have to smile for a week. You weren't on the uh, same episode of I'm Dying Up Here as Andy Kindler, were you? Because he was here last week. So it's two think, in a row now. I think so, yeah. Really? I think so. Andy Kindler, uh, Brad Garrett was on my episode. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, they were very nice. That was a fun day, too. Al Madrigal is a great guy, yeah. and uh, I love uh, Santino. Santino makes me laugh. Santino needs to be a bad guy in every movie. If he's a bad guy in a movie a year, it's going to be funny. Yeah, I love his bit about the garbage can in the bathroom. Did you ever hear it? Uh-uh. He goes, I, go, I don't stand when you put the, there should be a garbage can right here. So when I finish, when I wash my hands, and I have the piece of paper, I crumble it up, and I throw it in a garbage can that should be here. Right. And he goes, now it's over there. I'm not going over there. You know what? I'm going to throw the, I'm going to throw, I'm going to crumble it up, and I'm going to throw the paper on the floor, because that's where a garbage can should go. It just, <laughs> it just is so, delivered so well. And he's not wrong. Yeah, he's not wrong, but he, <laughs> But he's a good-looking guy, and I think he's really sarcastic. He's a great bad guy, you know. But hey, he's funny. I love those guys. The yeah. Superior Donuts show got canceled, huh? Yeah, I have a theory about that. But though, first of all, uh, that was awesome. I love the writers of that, uh, Hugh Moore and Dan St. Germain. Great, great. Wait, great there's comedian. someone named Hugh Moore? Hugh Moore. He's a comedian. He's great. That's Hugh not Moore. his real name. I'm no, his name is Hugh Moore. Hugh, Hugh Moore. Uh, he's very funny. Okay. He also wrote on a, a show on True TV. I can't remember the title of it. He's, he's great. Uh, Dan St. Germain was writing. And Maz Yeah, Rabani, Dan's Maz, been on this podcast. Yeah, Maz, Maz Rabani was on the show. David Kagner, who I love. And I saw David Kagner. I was like, hey, I want to tell you. In 1998, I did Montreal Comedy Festival, and I didn't have a great time because I was too new. Was too, I was too new. I shouldn't have been there. And there was one person who was very nice to me, and that was you. Oh. And he goes, cool. Well, things have changed. And he just walked away. What? <laughs> he was kidding. He was yeah, joking. Right. But it made, me, it made me laugh so hard. That's awesome. <laughs> he was great. <laughs> but I, I love that show. A lot of times, I feel that when you watch a sitcom and it doesn't make you laugh, I say... It's usually because they're using take four, take five. Of uh, When I was watching Superior Donuts be taped, I was like, this show is fucking funny. It was fucking funny. And then I was watching my episode, and I'm going, oh, this seems to be a take five or six and not take one or two. Interesting. When you, look, when you watch Everybody Loves Raymond, there are giant long laughs that last almost a minute. 
And you're like, wow, how is that? So when I was doing that TV show Stacked with Pam Anderson, I was able to tell if that was take one or take five or take six because I did them. Yeah. And so I, why did they choose that? And then, then I realized, oh, because the laugh is shorter and they want to fit in every one of their lines. Hmm. So if you just did what Everybody Loves Raymond did, and instead of writing 42 pages, double space, or 44, you write 36 then you leave room for the laughs, which means you can use the first take. Yeah. Which makes the experience for the audience so much more real and fun. That's my opinion. But nobody listens to me because I'm a fucking mango. <laughs> <laughs> That's the truth. Brian, I love mangoes. I uh, so do I. Uh, th- I really don't. I think they're a boring-ass fruit. Oh. I think mangoes were saved by women, were entered into the fruit uh, the fruit life by women. Like, kiwis and mangoes, I, you know. I don't have a you kiwi. can keep your kiwi. I like mangoes. Uh, mangoes are okay, but I mean, I'd rather have a fucking uh, a green apple. How do you fucking beat a green apple? How much taste in a green apple or a strawberry? Fair enough. Mango is just like this is like a this is like when women bring you rice crackers and you go, "This is really good. Have one of these." I go, "I'd rather just have a fucking cracker." No, no you lost. Yeah, exactly. Rice so that's a mango is a rice cracker to me. <laughs> It's like this is what what is the, what kind of fruit is this? This is some side fruit that you're trying to act like it's an apple, but it's not. Snapple has no rice cracker uh, variety, though. That'd be great, though. That actually wouldn't be great. You want a sip of rice cracker Snapple? <laughs> <laughs> what do I wash it down with? <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's your own your own vomit. <laughs> uh, I do have a question. You your podcast is kind of uh, you don't have a normal uh, schedule, really. It's no. sort of like boom, boom, boom. Here's well, two. Here's nobody four. cares anyway. That's what I realized. What, what, people kill themselves over their podcast. My friend in New York was so great at promoting podcasts, doing his podcast weekly, and nothing came of it after 10 years. I'm like, I'm not going to kill myself for free. I barely, I have to work my ass off just to make ends meet now. Now that reality shows have taken my fucking money. So anyway, so I have to, <laughs> sorry guys, it's not usually this bad mood. But I, uh, I forgot where I was. I yelled the thought out of my head. No, I well, I usually do it on Tuesdays, and I also took I also took eight months off because it doesn't fucking matter. It doesn't fucking matter. It doesn't fucking matter it, unless, uh, you ha- if you have, um, I always say like I, I I think Bill Burr is one of the greatest top ten living comedians right now. Uh, he was already terrific in New York and Boston years before he was famous, and I used to love watching him. And uh, when he the thing happened in Philadelphia. When he was videotaped in Philadelphia, he had he had three hours ready to go. So he did special after special after special, and that cemented his place. He was ready to go when when the when it, when he when he got hot when mm-hmm. his moment happened mm-hmm. when his Birdman in his underwear moment happened. You know, so that's so when that happens, I will go to a regular schedule. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But in the meantime, I'm gonna try to enjoy my fucking life because I'm already 44. And I'm and I had success already, but nobody remembers it because there wasn't a fucking internet. So now, now I'm just trying hanging on. Did Stacked ever end up on a streaming service? Um, no, no, because it was before all that, and it wasn't successful enough to be transferred over. It, it's on Hulu. Wait, no, it is on Hulu. Oh, it is on Hulu. It's on Hulu. Okay, yeah. yeah. But you know, Stacked is an interesting show because, like, I I, I loved the show and it was funny. But every week my character was different. He was either a regular guy, and next week he was a nerd, and I couldn't. And I was like, "Listen, you're this this episode. I'm like Niles from Frasier, and I don't know how to do that because I just I'm playing the character this way for a year. Yeah. So to change it, the only way to make that joke funny is for me to become a tight ass, and I don't know if I can transfer that over after a year of acting like a Jack Black character. It was confusing. Sure. You know. Um, but it's still a very good show, and to look in Christopher Lloyd's eyes and act with him was tremendous. And I knew what he liked. He's a stage actor, so he wanted to do it different each time. So what I would do is I would just actually, instead of doing what I wanted to do, I would look at him and act off him. Oh wow! To make it different, okay. for, make it different for him. And he was fun. I remember saying, uh, "Like you leave, you leave him alone for the first two weeks." And then we both wound up being in new relationships, so we had that in common, so we talked about that. So then I brought up everything. And I brought up One Flew of the Cuckoo's Nest. And as a kid, I always wondered why the final shot of the movie, Chief Bromden, you know, did you see the movie, mm-hmm. is running in darkness. And I always thought as a kid, I can barely see him. Why did why they shoot like that? As a kid, I thought this. Yeah. And I never thought about it again. 
And Christopher Lloyd was like, you know, he was a big drinker, that guy. And uh, they couldn't wake him up for the final shot. And then they finally got him up, and he had to run drunk through the mountains. But by then, the sun was gone down. I go, oh, my God. You you just answered a question I've had since I was eight. That's, you know? Wow. Yeah, exactly. It's insane. And it turns out he was just drunk. Yeah. And I, my favorite was, I, I go, to Christopher, I am you know, I love you. He goes, yeah, yeah. I was like, but I got to tell you what really bothers me that you did. And he goes, what? When you killed the cartoon shoe in Who Framed Roger Rabbit, the shoe wasn't doing anything. Right. It was a squeaky shoe. It didn't have arms. It wasn't going to fuck up your cable car empire. <laughs> Why did you dip it in the dip? And he goes, I'm, I'm really sorry, bro. <laughs> <laughs> But actually, we got along very well. For the record, he, that character kind of scared me. That was a it's good. Scary. He kills he, an innocent thing for yeah, no reason. That was a good. That's evil character. What you get, in order to establish a bad guy, they got to do something horrible. You ever see Penn's Labyrinth? Never. Good. There's one scene that's rough. But you have to. Every time you see the first time you see a bad guy, he has to do something really bad in the first intro scene. That's the key to a good bad guy. So Chris Lloyd kills a shoe. Pan's Labyrinth, you meet him, and he kills somebody. With, he kills a, a guy with a bottle in front of his dad. Horrible. Like, it literally stabbing him in the face with a mm, bottle. Okay. So, yeah, uh, that's how I feel. That's my, I love movies, and I, I fucking dig movies so much. Anyway, I just farted. <laughs> God. I'm sober now. I talked myself into sobriety. <laughs> good. We'll do a few more minutes here. You got to yeah, get some I, time I, in I, here? I'm yeah, I'm good. I'm going to have a good time. Did you see, uh, you worked with Pam Anderson, as you mentioned. Yeah. Did you Did you see, uh, for some reason, a headline came up about her this morning. No, what did it say? She's never had a good group sex experience. <laughs> why, why, don't, why don't I believe that? <laughs> you don't believe that? Well, she's actually a very innocent, sweet person, which is, which is what's funny. Mm-hmm. You know? Like she would get uncomfortable around sexual jokes, uh, you know, and, that, and so I do, in a way, believe that, and I do believe that tape was leaked, you know, because mm-hmm. uh, I I know her, and I, and she's very. Uh, well, I'm sure a lot of people are going to offer now, but she's with somebody right now, isn't she? Yeah, uh, I saw a link to something a young soccer player. I think that sounds about right. Yeah, yeah. She uh, it was interesting because we all hated Tommy Lee, but we all liked. Uh, Kid Rock So when she was Between the two of them She was deciding Who to date And we were like Well he's nice The other guy's an asshole We we like him Really? Yeah And then he wanted her To move to Detroit And she was like I'm not fucking moving To Detroit And that was the end of that But we all like We called him Bob We all like Bob Yeah Yeah Yeah. Have you Have you crossed paths With him at all? Well on the show Stacked He did They they came by And they hung out And did some Bob Kid Rock did a guest role But I haven't seen I haven't seen him since then. Uh, Chris uh, Chris Porter, he's a comedian. Yeah, I love Chris. Yeah, yeah he's, he's a good guy. He's real good friends with, with Bob. That sounds about right. He still sounds, he sounds like he would be. He tells stories about you know yeah. getting high in Bob's jet. Yeah, and also yeah. he's really in the jet. I just picture them like doing this the the rope swing into the fucking pond. <laughs> Don't you, don't you see that? Chris Hammond doing that? Barefoot. Listen to Led Zeppelin. Yeah. <laughs> maybe, I love Porter. Maybe shooting a gun. I remember Porter was like, "Do you want to do my podcast?" He's like, he's like, can you do my pockets? I was like, sure. He goes, I'll pick you up. So I got really stoned. And then he brought me to his podcast, and it was all political, and I didn't know what the fuck. Oh, was no. At. And I just, I don't think I said a word for an hour. <laughs> 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 and he was asking me questions. I was like, no. Because I didn't know, I thought it was going to be a fun podcast. Not pol- yeah, I thought it was going to be like his act. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, I, I'm, I'm uh, glancing at my notes here. I need to point out your, uh, it's been a while, a little bit, but uh, my wife just went through a thing where she watched every episode of Grey's Anatomy. Oh, yeah, like, yeah. That was a lot of fun. Yeah. And, yeah, I, and yeah. it must have been probably like three months ago. I'm sitting in bed. I'm not really watching, but I yeah. glance up. I'm like, there's fucking yeah, yeah. There's Brian. I love acting, man. And I, I love that day. That day was, they were, they, it just was a fucking... It just, I love acting. I, I can't, that's really where I belong, like, on a, on like a set. Mm-hmm. Way more than comedy or way more in a bed with a hot girl. I just belong. I, I'll do. I'll get the job done, but I really belong there. So on Grey's Anatomy, they just were treating me so well, and it was a fun group project. And I, I, I'd ad-lib, and they'd leave it in. Nice. It was also dramatic at times, and so I got to do those. Uh, like, I, I just really enjoyed it. And we were so delirious because we're staring at all the blood. It was the episode where the brother gets his arm caught in a meat grinder. In a meat grinder? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I, we were ad-libbing around it. No, we were just standing up looking at blood for about two days for 12 hours a day, just for those two scenes. And uh, I started to, when the cameras weren't on us, when the cameras were on Gray and 
and the other girl, yeah. me and the Spanish girl played the lesbian. I just started to try to make her laugh. I was delirious. So we had a line where I was like, I need this, I need this, I need this, stat. So I was like, okay, I need a, I need a band, I need a bag of condoms, uh, a season three of Will and Grace on DVD, and I was just a bunch of stupid stuff, and I, I forgot what it was. Uh, uh, God, I can't remember. But it was just dumb thing. Uh-huh. Zach Nut Bar and whatever. It's that. Yeah. She was so delirious. She thought that was hilarious. She goes, "You gotta say that." And I go, "No, I'm gonna get in trouble." But I don't have a job. You know, she has a job. I don't have a job. Yeah. So she would make me say that during Grace scenes. <laughs> yeah, we did season three of Will and Grace. Stat. <laughs> But she loved she loved it so much. It was fun to make her laugh, you know. Then I got fired. No, no, but you know what I'm saying. It was fun. <laughs> but I, that job I enjoyed a lot. Some jobs, I love, like when you're a guest role on something and the episode's long. The first thing they do is cut the guest roles acting. For example, I did a show Harry's Law. I'm a priest, and I'm talking to Kathy Bates, and I say uh, one of my parishioners killed himself, and I take a pause. Because obviously this just happened. And then I go on my next line. So what they do is they cut my pause. So I literally go, one of my prisoners committed suicide. Anyway, and it makes me look like a bad actor. So uh, what I liked about Mad Men and what I liked about Grey's Anatomy and and, um, uh, I'm Dying Up Here is they left everything in. Every eye roll, every huff, every puff, every breathe, they left it all in. And that... I find great. A lot of my fucking it's, oh, this story gets me mad. I was reading uh, for a pilot. I was reading for that show Grimm. Remember Grimm? Yeah. And Sean Hayes was a producer on Grimm. Okay. You know Sean Hayes from Will and Grace. Will and Grace, yeah. So I come in, and it's the part of the other cop, and their lines like, "Let's do it. Let's get him. All right, here we go. Those are the lines. So I want to play it. I was like, how about the guy's a little scared because now he's fighting wolf men? So how about he's a little frightened? So I was playing it like he was taking a deep breath and be like, here here we go. Like he didn't want to go in the room Mm -hmm. because there's a wolf man in there. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't like, here we go. It was like he was like, I can't believe we're going to fight a wolf man. And then they stopped me. And they said, can you just read the lines? Because I was acting around the lines. And I said, "You you so you just want me to say the lines and stand still? And Sean Hayes said, that's how America likes it, which is funny. But I, I wanted to say, but that's not what you did on Will and Grace. Uh-huh. You, you fucking acted. Correct. So anyway, uh, so obviously I didn't get the part. I told, it's my own fault. I said, if you gave me the part, this is how I would do it. And I, I'm just being honest with you to save us trouble in the future. Yeah, yeah. And they probably thought I was an asshole, but that was the truth, is if you hire me, I'm going to play him with a personality. You know, like, uh, oh. I hear a lot of... People that you know get frustrated about how you know certain aspects of the business are, and then yeah. they try to take it into their own hands and do it themselves. Well, that's what you. And so when um, that's why uh, Shameless, when I read for Shameless uh, and Mad Men and stuff, I colored it up a bit. You don't add lines; you just color. You you find things about the character that would make in the scene make the scene interesting. Yeah, and a good show. A good director and a good producer will, will hire you when you do that. And the other ones find guest roles um, uh, just background. Where, whereas if you had treated Gene, Gene Jones like that in No Country for Old Men, you'd have a boring fucking scene. Yeah. But because they gave Gene Jones fucking, allowed, allowed him to build a character, you know what I mean? Uh-huh. And so that's why Shameless came to me and said, do you know where you got the part? And I was like, no, because like, you played you played it like you known him for a long time, and I was like, okay, good, you know, because that's that's what you have, that's what acting is, yeah. yeah. And so I really like it when because not every, not every show wants that, and so it, I, when I find a show that wants that, I know like like I know it's going to be great, you know, it's going to be a fun experience, you know, and. So I get really passionate about that's acting. No, good. Comedy, I get negative about. Because <laughs> I've had Here we so are at Acme bad. Comedy Company. I, I had a guy throw a chair at me in Arkansas in, uh, in April. I had a guy try to beat me up in Reno in April. What? Because like, like, they fucking misunderstand everything. And I'm tired of clubs blaming the comics for them not having staff in the room. So that yeah. d- doesn't happen. I here. know it doesn't happen. Here. That's why everybody likes Acme. Yeah, because Acme is well run, and it's one. Of the reason they love it is because ninety percent of the rooms aren't well run. You know, so maybe more than that, seventy five percent. 
seventy five percent of the rooms aren't well run. So it's like when you go to some room, some C room or some B room, and there's and they don't have a guy. I remember once in Vegas, I, like this woman was angry and yelling and screaming at me. I looked up, I made fun of her, I made fun of her again. She interrupted, I made fun of her again. Now it five times, it's no longer my responsibility. Mm-mm, she should have been gone by that. And I looked up, and the bouncer saw what was going on, got scared, and walked out the back door. And then, next day, he blamed it on me, to the to the owners. Because you kept repl- or responding to her. Yeah, well, well, it doesn't matter. Yeah. So I ha- what am I supposed to do? So my point is, like, this room is great. And if all comedy rooms were run like this room, where, they've, where, they, where they're not serving food during the show, where he hires good comics, whether they're famous or not, mm-hmm. whether and the checks come out all at the same time every night, and it's not during the last joke. There's a club in Baltimore where they hand out the the, the checks during the last joke in at Tacoma. You're like, why? Are, so the whole show is building to this one moment. Yeah, no. And, and $55, please, yeah. at the very end. It makes no sense. Yeah, no. It's very so discreet here. If very all, discreet. If all clubs were run as well as this club, then I would talk about stand-up comedy. As, as lovingly as I talk about acting. Yeah. But when, no, there was no bridal party on the set of Mad Men interrupting me when I was trying to act. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, what, what, who, who's the guy from John Hamm didn't have a John uh, Hamm. He, he wasn't was drinking nice. a martini with a penis straw or anything Penis straw, yeah, it's funny <laughs> Words, show us your tits <laughs> They were all very nice John Hamm, John Hamm and the girl And uh, Richard Harris' son He was great He was perfect To see him on fucking uh, that show uh, Nobody watched it What the hell was that show? The Terror? Mm-mm. Richard Harris' son, the guy who played uh, Lane oh. on Mad Men, he did a show called The Terror, with, directed by Ridley Scott. It was wonderful. Probably the show of the year. Oh. And most people missed it. I missed it. It was a show of the fucking year. Completely missed it. it, it was, it's worth watching. If you go to uh, AMC uh, On Demand, you can watch it. If you get through the first two episodes, it's worth it. Sometimes that's a challenge. And uh, you do have to put on um, the fucking... The close caption? caption, yeah, because they got pretty strong English accents. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, and they all have beards. It takes a few episodes to realize who's who. <laughs> That's how probably black people feel looking at us. <laughs> you know. The best is I saw a fucking Dunkirk three times, and at the end I was like, "Oh, that's that guy." <laughs> so <laughs> the three, the three leads, the yeah. three leads look alike. <laughs> very funny. I want to. Uh, we can wrap this up in just a second. I want to compliment you on. Uh, Thanks. Uh, back, back to you. I don't know. You're start. You're thinking that you're struggling with writing. Maybe you are. No, I'm, about not, writing I'm not. Jokes. No, no. I'm not struggling. I'm not struggling. Not struggling. I love writing. I'm just getting because of my because of my stature, stature on the comedy. Uh, ladder, the comedy pyramid. I only feel comfortable doing five, ten minutes new in the middle. Fair enough. Okay. Right now. All right. So that's and that's until that eventually replaces things, and which it has. I've dropped some things. I'm trying to replace. Try. Sure. Okay. It's taking me a lot longer to write an hour than it should. It's taking me three years as opposed to one. No. Okay. Here's my point, and I'm fully aware of of what why. Here's what I love of uh, something that you're doing right. on the, on your podcast. Uh-huh. The little. Uh, this episode's brought to you by oh, those things. Yeah, the fake, the fake sponsors. I, I'm laughing out. Lo- I'm LOLing <laughs> at those things. They're so silly, Thanks, stupid, man. and just like. Oh, yeah, that would, I'm glad you bring up the podcast because I do really enjoy that. So I would love people to listen to it. What was I wrote? I wrote. It's one. called. It's also my fault for naming it a horrible title. This is my podcast. I remember I was pitching it to Al Madrigal. He goes, "What's the title?" I go, "This is my podcast." And it was a big long pause. E. And I was like, "Okay, he did not like that." Yeah, but yeah. Who, who gives a shit? Whatever. It can. Have but, Dumbest name ever. People if you go to SoundCloud or you go to iTunes and type, this is my podcast. There's a picture of me yelling at a monkey, and that's that's the podcast. This but episode I really, is I really enjoy it. it I, here's what I wrote down: This episode's brought to you by Luden's cough drops. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not, not the product Luden's cough drops, but uh, there's a guy named Luden, and whatever drops out of his mouth when he coughs. <laughs> Stupid. It's That's stupid. so stupid. Yeah, I, love, I love stupid. I love stupid. I wish I could do that shit on stage. You know? Uh, the, my favorite, there was a new one, No Trans Fat. No, yeah. Yes! It's a website for transvestites, no fatties allowed. No fatties. This is all dumb jokes. I love that shit. Oh, yeah, and, uh, what is it? Uh, Sorry, that stuff gets me out. Uh, reverse. <laughs> oh, there was one called... Uh, the, the reverse douching, the reverse taint, I can't remember what it was. Uh, the, the, the disgusting taint. The, the world's, the first poorly named Chinese restaurant. <laughs> it's just, I, I just love that stuff. Yeah, I look stupid. So keep that up. That's good stuff. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. I, the I, album, uh, Stupid Time, is all a lot like that. It's all 
just sketches, and you might like it because a guy gets raped by a cat in it. Oh well. Maybe did you like cats? <laughs> right. There's a good skit where a guy gets raped by a cat. It's very funny. Thanks for pointing out that I like the cat part. <laughs> <laughs> <I> <laughs> Not the rape part. Well, you never know. <laughs> you do look kind of like a rapey. <laughs> <laughs> and we're gonna end there. Uh, did you uh, did you bring what did you bring to sell? And uh, I brought after uh, shows? I brought t-shirts. Um, I got to. I don't want to give it away, but I have a T-shirt with a joke on it. Yeah, fat people or people entering the world of fat seem to like. Mm-hmm. So I've uh, seen that online. People yeah, enjoy that. It seems to, it's a good sell, mm-hmm. you know. And uh, sold I think one hundred sixty dollars worth so far. I'm looking to sell more because I have a huge cocaine debt to pay off. <laughs> huge. I'm just joking. I don't do coke. Uh, pay, I did, pay for coke. I, 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 I stopped coke a long time ago. <laughs> My body was like, yeah, "What are you doing? You're gonna fucking have a heart attack." Just, just taking a shit you have a hard time walking over here was rough you realize and I, it's two blocks away and I almost died three times well you know what you need to do to tra- travel no. around Minneapolis now is get, rent one of those little scooters have you seen people flying by on those scooters no yeah it used to be I mean they still have on those bikes repay a few I'm not, dollars I'm not gonna do that I'm not suggesting the bike thank you the scooter is is po- powered you you put nothing into it just to, like a few bucks I think I should I should take the walk you take the walk. Yeah. It's uh, I'll take the walk. Okay, but it's 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 nice. It's my it's um I forgot what we were talking about. Jesus, bringing your stuff this. over here to sell it. Oh, that's yeah, that's in the green room. Yeah, and um yeah, yeah, and that's about it. Then just selling the t-shirts and I got the album and the podcast and look for me on alone together on August first on Hulu and Shameless coming out soon and that's about it. There we go. And my next show next week will be a closed casket. <laughs> my next show will be a closed casket. <laughs> My joke now is, come see Brian Sklar. This way, when I die, you can say, I saw it coming. <laughs> <laughs> That's the perfect way to end it. Right, thank, great. thank you, thank Brian. Thank you very much, Justin, for everything. <laughs>